Hi, everybody. We're here doing our first Facebook Live, so bear with us. Ever. <laughs> hey, my name is Beth Ann Fisher. I am a physical therapist and the founder of Womb Matters Holistic Pelvic Therapies. And I'm Jen Anderson, physical therapist and founder of Anderson Physical Therapy and Wellness. Um, and we're here in Edgewater, Colorado, here to talk to you about pelvic health. Yeah, we, we just want to start a conversation for those of you who are not familiar with pelvic health. And this evening we've titled this little Facebook Live post, Pelvic Health, What You Think Is Normal Isn't. And we really want to get the message across with our work that women are living with a lot of different conditions and they don't know that pelvic health can help, but because you and all of your friends experience the same things, what becomes average for all of us and um, unhelpful, we think we have to live with it. And, and we just wanna get the message across that average and normal are not the same thing. Your body was made to function a certain way and we can help. Yeah. Um, so what we wanna start off with is just kind of discussing each of our backgrounds so you can kind of get to know us and then we're going to dive in um, to public health and what we do and what that looks like and why it's important for you to know about it. Um, so Beth Ann, why don't you tell me a little bit about how you got into public health and your history as a physical therapist? Sure. Yeah, I've been a physical therapist for about 17 years. Okay. I spent a lot of time as an intensive care unit physical therapist, worked with some specialty populations, including eating disorders. And I learned a lot about, in that phase of my career, trauma in the body. And I bring that with me now into pelvic health practice. Um, two, two modalities that really worked for me were internal pelvic floor work, which you know very well, mm -hmm and um, mind abdominal massage were key factors in my own journey of pelvic health and healing. And so I decided I got to do this. I got to share this with the world. And here I am now nice. sharing it. Nice. Yeah. So really passionate about really it. Really passionate. Yeah. I'm very excited to share. Nice. Jen, tell us about you. How did you get into this? So I've, I've like done it all as a physical therapist. I've worked inpatient like you have. Um, and then I was heavy into orthopedics, like treating hips and knees and things like that. And I took my first job out here in Colorado. Um, she, the, the owner of the clinic was going on maternity leave and she had public health patients. And she was like, I need you to take these patients. So I had to get trained. And I didn't really know what I was in for. Um, but what I found was that helping women with these issues was so fulfilling. Mm. And I enjoy it so much. I just, knowing that like women don't have to live with these issues mm -hmm. and empowering them in that way has been so fulfilling for me that, yeah, that's why we're doing this, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so what we'd like to share with our audience as well, beyond getting to know us a little bit, is what maybe it would look like to come in for a session with a pelvic floor physical therapist such as yourself, and then maybe what it might look like to do some mind abdominal work with me. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of misconceptions about right. what happens in a pelvic health physical therapy session. And right. So we want to dispel a little of that. Yeah. Um, so when you when you come in to see me, I'm not just gonna zoom in on your pelvic floor. I'm gonna ask you questions about your health in general, like what um, chronic conditions mm -hmm. you might have. Um, have you had any orthopedic issues like ne neck, back, hip issues? Because mm -hmm. that can all play a role. Um, like you said, like trauma in the body. Mm -hmm. And I find a lot of women actually do carry that trauma in mm -hmm. the pelvis, right? We sure. just like lock it away in there and then we, just cut ourselves off from the waist down. And um, so even just opening the dialogue about that is I think huge for women because mm -hmm. a lot of times health practitioners don't even ask them about those issues. Sure. Um, so I'm gonna ask you all those questions like is sex painful? Um, do you have problems with constipation? Do you leak urine? When does that happen? Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm just going to watch like your general movement pattern. So I'm going to watch how you squat. I'm going to watch how you breathe. I'm going to test, um, your core and hip musculature to see like where you're, where you're strong, where you're weak, like mm -hmm. where do we have to do work? Um, because those muscles work really closely with your pelvic floor muscles. So if you have weakness in the trunk or, or pelvis 
or glutes, right? The booty. Um, <laughs> that's going to affect your pelvic floor. Um, and then so then I'll usually do a pelvic exam if the person is comfortable. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes they're not. You know, sure. they might have had trauma. Um, lots of various. You know, maybe they just need to get me to know me better. It's totally mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. um, but when I do an internal exam, um, I wear gloves and I lubricate my finger. And then I'll say, you know, I'm going to insert my finger into the vagina. And I don't use a speculum. There are no stirrups. Um, so a lot less like clinical feeling than um, your normal like OBGYN exam. And what I'm feeling for are, do you have any painful spots um, in, in the pelvic floor musculature? So you can get trigger points mm. in those muscles, just like you can like, you know, you get a trigger point in your neck or your shoulder and it, radi it radiates up into the neck mm -hmm. and gives you a headache. You can get those same kind of trigger points in your pelvic floor. And so we can treat those. Cool. So we'll kind of look for that. And then I'm gonna look and see how well can you coordinate those muscles. So can you contract them? Can you relax them? Um, can you send them down into the basement, which is like what you use like when you're having a bowel movement or if you're urinating mm -hmm. or delivering a baby. Um, so it's sometimes it's not even about strength, it's more about like coordination. Sure. Um, and then I'll give you at home um, exercises to work on mm -hmm. so that you've got stuff to do and then we gradually, you know, build upon that and things start really simple and then we'll like make it more dynamic so that you learn to like contract and lift your pelvic floor when you're picking up your baby from the floor. Cool. Um, and I want it to become like so automatic that like you don't need to think about it that much mm. to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot, it takes a lot of practice, um, it takes dedication up, upon the patient to do it. Um, but I find that the women that do the work I mean, they're so thankful for it, and, yeah. like, it's amazing. Wow. So, like, is issues, so cool. right? Yeah. Like, that they never thought that they could have help with, and sure. they do. Yeah. yeah. And how long are your sessions usually in this practice, Jen? Oh, I like to see, like, new patients for about, like, 75 to 90 minutes. Okay. And then follow-ups. I like an hour, because I feel cool. like that really gets, you know, you can really get a lot done. Cool. And then And I, most of these women are really busy. Sure. And so it's like that's their night to like get in and take care mm -hmm. of themselves. And mm -hmm. so I try to make the most of it. So awesome. Yeah. So they get an hour plus with you um, and just with you the whole time. One-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. Yep. Just um, me one-on-one. -on -one. Great. Yeah. In a, in a sweet little space. Yeah. And, and you're, they're on a regular table. It's not right. like in the OB's office or right. anything like that. It sounds very inviting. Yeah. Very That's inviting. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. And I always welcome, you know, if they're, if they're, having a hard time with it like mm -hmm. we can stop at any time awesome. um there's and there's so many things we can work on the pelvic floor externally so mm -hmm. like i can just put my hand on your bottom and feel what your pelvic floor is doing that's perfect way to start cool um so there's there's different levels yeah depending on the patient's comfort awesome yeah you can adapt yeah exactly great yeah yeah that's really helpful so tell me more about my <laughs> abdominal massage because i yeah. i want to know more about it okay well, um, a Mayan abdominal therapy session is similar in structure. Um, you know, there's an interview process and there's a treatment process and mm -hmm. there's what I like to call a home care, a lifestyle movement program that we set up. Um, but the work is different because my focus is on the uterus and the uterus's position in the bowl. And a lot of this, there's there are many abdominal massage practices historically uh, around the world, the mm -hmm. Mayan abdominal massage or the Arvigo technique is standardized internationally. And so that's the okay. work that I learned through. Okay. Um, that's the work that helped me a lot. When someone comes in for their first session, I usually spend about an hour and 45 minutes to two hours that first session. We okay. have a lot to accomplish. Yeah. And I want the patient to walk out with a, a new skill okay. um, to, for self-care. Okay. And so um, we do an interview. And the thing about it, a lot of women don't know that their uterus might not be in a good position in their bowl. And so there's some education that goes on about what are the symptoms that a woman might feel mm -hmm. that's that are contributing to her issues. Sometimes 
that it can be contributing to an incontinence issue because the uterus is forward of where she should be and it's sitting on the bladder. Sometimes the uterus is backwards and sitting on um, the rectum and so it contributes to a constipation issue. Mm -hmm. She can also be side to, I call her she. Okay. She's a part of me. I like to think of it as part of the person, I not like a that. machine. Um, so you'll, 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 if you come to see me, you'll hear me call her she all the time. Um, if she's tipped to the right or the left, that can also contribute to hip issues because of fascial connections. Um, having excessive cramping during periods can right. be a reason, a, a symptom that one might experience. Um, and why does the uterus get out of position? So many reasons. Childbirth alone can create a non-optimal position in the uterus um, as she sits in the bowl. Um, running on cement for long periods of time can uh, weaken the ligaments that hold the uterus in place. There's at least we know of right now seven sets of ligaments that hold the uterus in place and they can get stretched over time with that pounding. So therefore then athletes who have a long history of pounding activity mm -hmm. uh, with their sport can okay. also have issues with this. Um, I mentioned labor and delivery, difficult delivery. Having deliveries of children, uh, what might be considered in some cultures too close to each other, being maybe too active right after you have your child, okay. um, can the, the ligaments are tender and in kind of a weakened state and that can bring the uterus out of position. So there's a lot of, there's so many more too, I don't wanna yeah. <laughs> bore everybody, but yeah. um, it's a thing, it's yeah. a thing and we don't often know that. Well, and like, it's something that I know that mm -hmm. it's like, I, I will treat the pelvic floor mm -hmm. and then I'm like, okay, Beth Ann, I think yeah. their uterus is in, you know, mm -hmm. needs some help because it's mm -hmm. sitting on top of the bladder, or it's sitting against the rectum. And then that's where this yeah. really works well together. But I do want to ask you, so like when, how, how do you, what kind of techniques mm -hmm. do you use to kind of get the uterus in the sure. right place and then you mentioned that um you give you give your patient something to go home with yeah. so they have a new skill set so like talk to me a little bit about that like what right. could i expect yeah and i think it's important if someone gets into working with mind abdominal and massage and even among practitioners um we can give the uterus new positions to be in we're really mm -hmm. increasing the uterus's mobility okay. just because you put her somewhere doesn't mean she stays there mm -hmm. life keeps happening but we're adding to the uterus's mobility and the potential of her sitting in more optimal spots. So even with your pelvic floor, some of those patients that have a hypertonic pelvic floor, right. meaning that the pelvic floor is extra tight and squeezing all the time, right. um, it could partially be because the uterus is in some odd position and the pelvic floor is trying to compensate through all those tissues. Okay. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. As far as though the, I'm forgetting what you asked in the middle. Oh, just like, um, so like you were saying that you give them a new skill set uh, to take yeah. home. Yeah. So like, will my, they learn? Like they will some? learn. So my techniques okay. are gentle to okay. answer that piece. That was the middle piece. My techniques are gentle. We're working on the lower belly. So we're right down. If you make a triangle with your fingers and you flip it over and put it down and find that bone on your lower pelvis, that's the pubic symphysis, is the bottom bone. We start the lower abdominal massage right above that bone because if you take that triangle, flip it, and put it over your pelvis, the uterus sits right in the middle of that triangle. Okay. And so we're working on a gentle lower abdominal massage. Um, we do that together. I teach you how to do that. Okay. And that becomes a daily practice. Okay. It becomes at at the very minimum, a good way of helping the uterus to find good positioning. Um, because like I said, she doesn't always stay there. We need to consistently address that. It's like stretching practice. Okay. You know, you don't just stretch your hamstrings once a week and expect that they're going to perform and do what you want them to do mm -hmm. the whole week. It's something that you might do every day or several times a day if they're tight right. and you're wanting mobility to do a certain activity like a deep squat or something like that. Okay. Same kind of idea. So then there's an upper belly component. A lot of people don't know mine. Abdominal therapies are really good for digestion okay. and helping with elimination as well. Okay. So um, we teach an upper belly component. And then as a professional, I do extra work that is in the protocol that we use that's on the back, gentle joint mobilizations and pelvic alignment. So there's all that. 
What I teach the patients to do themselves is the front belly work that really works with the, the uterus and the digestion. And pelvic congestion is a big issue too. Mm -hmm. So we sit a lot. Yeah. And that creates, um, the, the way that the circulation goes in the, pel in the pelvis is interesting because there's less valves and there's a lot more kind of venous stasis that can happen and such the more we sit. Mm -hmm. And so um, doing the manual massage can help when women have like a vaginal heaviness that okay. they feel. Some have it with ovulation or premenstrual, some have it all the time. Okay. And so this technique can also help with flow and circulation in the pelvis. And That's awesome. Some of those symptoms. Yeah. And when you're doing it every day, it can definitely help. Okay. So very cool. Yeah. 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 I know some patients I want to say. Likewise. <laughs> so should we dive into that? Yeah. So this is the fun thing and why we're doing this together. Jen and I were kind of put together in this space as a gift. We had no idea we hadn't met each other and, and we practice out of farm to table treatment. Little plug for farm to table. It's a wonderful space in Edgewater, Colorado, owned by yeah. Becky Kellogg, another awesome PT. And um what we want to suggest is that the collaboration of the pelvic floor skills and the uterine positioning skills can really benefit, extra benefit, some of the populations that we work with. Mm -hmm. Ideally, there's a lot of patients that we'd like to be seeing both of us, um, but we want to highlight a couple populations that we think really can, can see more, maybe from working from both angles. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Jen, can you talk to us a little bit about some of those conditions that we see that could really benefit from both? Yeah. So, um, I think one of, one of the populations that, um, Bethann kind of already mentioned was prolapse. Mm. And so in, in the pelvic bowl, you've got, um, the bladder and then the uterus and then the rectum all sitting in there. And if you've got the uterus falling forward or falling backward, that's going to affect um, that heaviness. Sure. And um, so one of the things that I work on mm -hmm. with uh, my patients that have prolapse is we work on strengthening the pelvic floor muscles because it's like a sling underneath you. So those pelvic floor muscles run from your pu pubic bone in the front to your tailbone in the mm -hmm. back, and they provide that support lifting those, those organs. But when those muscles get weak, and that can be from like childbirth, um, surgeries, various issues, um, but we can strengthen those muscles. Yeah. So I think that's important too. Yeah. Like sometimes people forget like that the pelvic floor, they're muscles, right? Like you can pick up a dumbbell and start doing bicep curls mm -hmm. and your bicep will get stronger. Right. And if I teach you the proper way to exercise your pelvic floor muscles, you can make your pelvic floor muscles stronger. And mm -hmm. a lot of times when I see women that have prolapse, they are just so desperate and don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And we can make their symptoms so much better. Mm -hmm. um, so that's kind of what I work on is it's the pelvic floor strengthening piece. Mm -hmm. And then like even positioning. Sure. So if, if the um, bladder is kind of fallen back mm. against the uterus, mm -hmm. then I'll teach them more exercises to do like laying on their belly to better position sure. the bladder and then it makes it a little bit easier for them to exercise their mm -hmm. pelvic floor um but yeah so then talk yeah. about like i mean we talked about a little bit about the uterus but right. she can so i think and say more about it yeah with prolapse in particular um especially like uterine prolapse which can be a really tricky problem yeah um, the uterus is sitting low in the bowl all the time unless a woman has a pessary mm -hmm. um which is something else we'll talk about at some point. Yeah. If you don't or know what a, that is, ask a ask question. <laughs> um, but the women who have them know what they are. Anyway, some of the ligaments and such can get tight and low. And what the abdominal massage does is it helps to bring the uterus back up into position. And then we have some adjunctive tools. Um, there's a there's a wrap called a faha. And we can wrap that after doing the technique around the waist. They can be really stylish or you can wear them under your clothes. And it just helps to hold the uterus up and in position. Same with a rectocele or a cystocele. Cystocele meaning a bladder prolapse, rectocele meaning a, a, a <laughs> rectal prolapse. Mm -hmm. Like, what is that? Um, as those organs are falling into the vaginal space, it 
next time we'll have pictures, but they fall into the vaginal space, into the middle, and they start coming out from the vag into the vaginal space. Mm -hmm. um, doing the massage and getting that upward action, getting the circulation helps to heal the ligaments. I'm not saying necessarily that will fix the prolapse, but we can give it other positions to be right. in that are more up and center for right. us and with the pelvic floor PT, then you can get more effective contraction right. because they're not sitting down in the space necessarily yeah. all the time, but they're not supposed to be in. Yeah. It's not this like weight, like exactly lo loading the pelvic floor. All yeah. The, yeah. Okay. And there's so much to work on that. I love being able to work with the pelvic floor PT, especially on mm -hmm. that issue because it's just good to give the patient yeah. little chunks. You need like both, and right? You need to move that organ and then you mm -hmm. need to give it the support it exactly. needs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah. And yeah, exactly. It's not, not always are you going to be able to get rid of the prolapse. Right. Sometimes you can reverse it mm -hmm. a stage. At certain grades. Um, but I will say like when I do this work with my patients, mm -hmm. like you usually can always improve their symptoms, Absolutely. which is huge, right? Because mm -hmm. you just like give them their life back, right. you know? It's horrible walking around the grocery store and feeling like your uterus is going to fall on the floor. No mm -hmm. one wants that. So No, yeah. no, and it, it's, it, and it feels that way. And it, yeah. cre it creates problems. People don't want to go to the store anymore right. because they're afraid of these things happening. And, yeah. and it can be treated. We yeah. can help. We yeah. can support that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tell me about um, painful periods, what we call clinically dysmenorrhea, and how you help that as another yeah. way that we can synergize. I think, you know, when women have painful periods, that's, you know, every month, right? They're going through this, you know, week-long process mm -hmm. where they're in pain. And so typically I'll see a lot of patients that have trigger points okay. in their abdominal wall, um, in their, in their glutes, and then like inside their pelvic floor. Mm -hmm. And because you're in pain, you know, you kind of take this like bent over positioning, which then just worsens mm -hmm. the tightness that you have. Sure. It's going to restrict your breathing pattern. Mm -hmm. Um, so one of the things that I always talk about with mm -hmm. patients, that's really important is your diaphragm that sits really that sits right at the base of your rib cage when i inhale my diaphragm moves downwards mm -hmm. and then all of my intra-abdominal contents move downwards as well and then my pelvic floor should lengthen yeah so if you've lost if you're just guarded through your abdominal wall and you're kind of in this hunched protective position if i ask you to take mm -hmm. a diaphragmatic breath it's going to be really tough yeah. so really um working on posture sure um working on the, those breath mechanics and then getting the breath hmm. to connect or the diaphragm movement to connect with the pelvic floor is mm -hmm. huge i think in any like pain, pelvic pain condition sure um and again like what i was saying like we will address like those trigger points throughout the torso and the oh. hip musculature and then directly on the pelvic floor. And yeah. then I will teach these women how to do that on themselves. Cool. Um, whether that's using their own finger mm -hmm. or they, we have tools called pelvic wands mm -hmm. that you can get, um, um, give you a little extra reach so you can get to some mm. of those tight spots. And some of them will use those during their periods just mm. to help alleviate pain. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool. Um, so tell me a, a kind of a, your yeah. approach, like with, with those kinds of conditions. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, my abdominal massage was a game changer for me personally, because dysmenorrhea was something I really struggled with. Mm -hmm. Um, so the beauty, and this is where my abdominal therapy shine is that often excessive period pain has a lot to do with uterine position. So when we start working with the uterus and we really get the position optimal, the uterus doesn't have to work as hard during that releasing time of the month to bleed. So it contracts normally mm -hmm. to release the endometrium. If a baby hasn't been nested into the, into the uterus, she has to contract extra though, if she's in a funny spot. Some women, you might be, have been told that you have a tilted uterus, meaning she's flipped back or something. And a lot of those women experience more back pain, okay. more odds kinds of cramping. Um, or she can be forward if the uterus isn't sitting nice and up optimal between the bladder and the rectum then she whatever positions in she's in she has to work really hard to squeeze 
that creates extra cramping because the cramping is the uterine squeezing. And so um, once we can do the abdominal massage and help to adjust the positioning, women experience less cramping overall because the uterus doesn't have to work as hard. The uterus doesn't, with your work, there's mm -hmm. more oxygen getting to the uterus. Right. Lack of oxygen can also increase the pain with cramping. Okay. So um, getting oxygen to the tissues, having better circulation, because we've done the lower belly massage in general to move the fluids, and then getting the uterus in a better position decreases the need for contraction. Okay. It doesn't go away, it's a normal process. But in the Mayan work, it's very interesting. Um, it's generally suggested that a normal period has minimal cramping that does not require medication, and it only lasts for a couple of hours. Okay. I don't know how many women in this country know that that would be normal. I didn't know that would be normal. I know. Um, until I started learning that I could feel better. So. Yeah, that's how right. It's that. like changing, <laughs> changing what you expect during changing your period. Changing average is... to normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. That's exactly the title of this. Right. That's why we're talking. That's why we're talking about it. So, Jen, you mentioned constipation. Yes. That's a big issue that you can help, and I think it might be a little bit of a chronic thing in the American yes, society. Yeah, a lot of people are constipated. Yeah. Um, so constipation has to do a lot with coordination of those pelvic floor mm -hmm. muscles. So, all right. So I always talk about like the pelvic floor kind of being like an elevator, okay. right? So it's this sling underneath you. Its job is to hold up those internal organs. And so it's kind of always at like ground level, like providing that little mm -hmm. bit of support, right? And then I can do a contraction and pull that pelvic floor up and in and take it to like the third or fifth floor. Got it. And then that's like, I'm not going to poop. I'm not going to pee. I'm not going to fart. Because it's also Because I'm tight. in an elevator. No, I'm just kidding. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then it can come back down to sure. ground level, right? Okay. So if I want to have a bowel movement, mm -hmm. I may want to send my pelvic floor into the basement. So it's a gentle push down and out. Okay. Um, when you have hard stool, the tendency is to kind of like hold your breath. Hmm. and push down and out, which is going to put more stress on the pelvic floor, right? That's how we end up okay. with like hemorrhoids and things like yep. that. So one of the things we'll work on um, is even just like breath work sure. when you're having a bowel movement. So mm -hmm. I really want you to breathe out as you push down and out. Um, and then just even learning that pelvic floor coordination. So mm -hmm. like feeling what it's like to send those that pelvic floor musculature into the basement. I would say a lot of times my patients that are constipated have tight pelvic floors. So do some of those, address some of those trigger points, sure. release some of the muscles, and then teach the pelvic floor that it can move into the uh, basement okay. again, which it's probably forgotten it can. Sure. And it makes passing stool a whole lot easier and less painful. Mm. There's also things that we can do with positioning on the mm -hmm. toilet. Like I, th I talk about potty posture. Squatty potty. Squatty potty hey! is a thing. <laughs> it is so a good thing. So if you get your knees higher than your hips and do a little lean forward mm. when you're on the toilet, that actually helps straighten out the rectum Great and makes tip. it easier to pass stool. Okay. So then there's a whole piece that Beth Ann can tell you about, about like digestion sure. and everything. So take it away. Take it away, Beth Ann. Um, <laughs> I mentioned earlier that one thing with the uterine positioning is that if a, a uterus is tipped back, what we call retroflexed or retroverted, it can be pushing on the, the tail end of the rectum, which means it's harder to get stool past that spot in the rectum. And that can be one contributor to constipation. Mm -hmm. But where we also work with this is the upper abdominal massage. Mm -hmm. so, so there's a whole piece that I teach my patients that works with the large, the transverse colon. It's that part of your colon that goes up and around and down the sides under your rib cage. And we do this massage that helps to push, um, helps to kind of push whatever is inside of there. Uh, in the direction that normal peristalsis goes. And so um, someone who really struggles with constipation, this I, my experience with patients is that it gives them that extra push gentle. It's not like they're mashing on their belly, mm -hmm. um, but it gives them the extra push that they need along with 
good intake of fiber and all of these other yeah. things that really need to be optimized. Constipation right. is not like a one hit wonder kind of issue. Right. 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 It's, I know it's a I'm always like adjustment. driving water, right? right. Like people are like, I'm water. taking more fiber. I'm like, but you need to yep. drink more and water, more water too. Yeah. 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 So it's a good way to gentle help manually push things through the system. Um, and, and some people just need that extra little for yeah. whatever reason, some kind of surgery they've had, or they have an abdominal scar. This really works well with abdominal scars too. Yeah. Cool. So, yeah. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then, okay. I think the last topic we wanted to talk about was painful intercourse. Yeah. Um, so tell me a little bit about yeah. my abdominal massage and how that can help with that. Sure. Well, as you know, there's a lot of reasons that um, someone might be experiencing painful intercourse. Mm -hmm. So many that, that we can't go into right now. Right. But one that um, I've learned a lot about and, and really works with the mind abdominal is sometimes when the uterus is not in an optimal position, it makes uh, certain positions for having sex okay. um, more painful for the patient. So if we can optimize the position of the uterus in the bowl, it adds to uh, comfort mm -hmm. with insertion mm -hmm. um, for male-female partnerships. Um, so that decreases the pull. It, it, if the uterus is not in a good spot, then there's uneven pull on ligaments, and there's at least that we know of seven sets of ligaments, uh, pairs of ligaments that hold the uterus in place. So uh, when she's off, then that pulling can create fascial tightness that can create pain because fascia has tons of nerve receptors and and that can really send signals back to the brain repeatedly which then can create anxiety yeah. and create further difficulties with proper amounts of arousal to have a pleasurable intercourse experience mm -hmm. so the abdominal positioning can or, sorry the uterine positioning can really help to um let's just say optimize the tension side to side okay. in the bowl interesting how about you yeah tell us about how you can help well just like what you said like there's yeah. so many different reasons why someone might have painful intercourse but like so one population i would say is um my postpartum women mm -hmm. so yeah let's say that they had some vaginal tearing mm -hmm. um with delivery and so we'll work on that scar tissue because mm. um, they might have pain with insertion and so just mobilizing, teaching them, I'll mobilize it, but then I'll yeah. teach them how to mobilize cool. that tissue okay. and they can keep working on it. Um, and then sometimes it may be trigger points that mm -hmm. are deeper inside the pelvic bowl and the pelvic floor musculature, so sure. then we'll address those too. And then just teaching them like the breathing techniques that, awesome. um, and sometimes it's just, you know, I mean, fear Mm -hmm. I mean, if you had a negative sexual experience mm -hmm. and then it's just, you know, your body remembers it. Mm -hmm. And so anything comes near the vagina and yeah. it's like, no. <laughs> yeah. And um, so we'll, we'll do graded exposure. Great. So um, teaching the person that they can insert their finger mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe they have some soreness, but it's safe. And then we can start with, you know, very small dilators and then work up to larger dilators mm -hmm. depending on what their goals are cool um yeah and awesome yeah so that you know women can enjoy sex because yeah. that's important it's supposed to be <laughs> enjoyable and that's back to that idea that we want to get across right that what's average which if you talk to a lot of your friends with kids it's average to have pain with sex after you've had a kid, but that doesn't mean it's normal. Right. So that's the message we really want to get across. Right. And you don't have to live with it. There are things that you can do. Yeah. Ah, uh, Peggy loves my abdominal massage. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> We're playing with all these little comments here. Um, so now is the time actually yeah. where if anyone has a question, and I don't know if we can scroll scroll on here to see if anyone has asked a question, we'd love to answer if you have any um, questions about anything we've discussed. Uh, we'd be happy to answer those in this moment. Yeah, fire away or um, if you're watching this later or a question comes to you later, just like list your mm -hmm. question in the comments and then we'll respond. Yeah, we'll respond. Um, we can respond in the comments. Maybe we'll do another Facebook Live. That'd be sure. fun. Um, we can only get better at this. I right. Think. <laughs> we can only get better. <laughs> yeah. So far away, if you have something, we'll give you a minute or two. Um, and if not, 
uh, we're almost done. We love the fact that y'all have joined us and we have a few great announcements yeah. that we want to share with you. Okay, do you want to tell them about the convention? Should, should we, maybe let's just jump into the announcements. Yeah, we'll and just go into it and if anybody up, we'll writes a question, the, we'll, we'll grab it. Yeah, so Jen and I are really excited um, to partner in what we're calling a combined strategy um, session, which means that that we want to offer a special uh, package for those who are interested in trying this combined technique of working with two PTs who complement one another in their skills, meaning working with uterine positioning, uh, pelvic congestion, drainage, that kind of thing, along with the pelvic floor, education, breathing, teaching, and kind of getting the whole bowl taken yeah. care of. Yeah, exactly. So what we're offering um, for a limited time is a dual kind of evaluation and treatment. Now that doesn't mean Jen and I will be there together. It's actually two different sessions, one evaluation and treatment with Jen and one evaluation and treatment with myself. So it's two, two full sessions. We, we, when we practice, we always do a full treatment session with our initial evaluations, the beauty of the kind of practice setting we're in. Mm -hmm. um, our patients get treated from the very start and we'd like to offer that for $300 and that's saving over, uh, over, uh, I didn't do the math actually, but it's saving about $30 over working with each of us separately. And the big advantage to that is that you get two practitioners in very specialized areas of the bowl collaborating together. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's really cool because it's more like one plus one equals a lot more than two. Mm -hmm. It's the power of the sum that you get when you get this kind of work yeah. all done together. Yeah. So $300 for both of us working with you. And then you can choose if you want to do some more, you like what you're feeling, you want to continue with one of us or both of us. Yeah. We can talk about those options too, but we really want to offer this to our clients because we think it would be so beneficial for we named four conditions. Uh, we named prolapse, dysmenorrhea, or painful periods, constipation, and painful intercourse. There's several more. I mean, we didn't even touch on endometriosis. Oh, we have a question. Oh, we have a question. <laughs> <laughs> what can be done about vaginal dryness and pain? Ah, well, we both have things that we can suggest for that. Yes, we do. Um, so I, I'll. It depends what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so my ladies that have gone through menopause, sometimes it's just low estrogen levels. Mm -hmm. um, even my um, mom's postpartum, yeah. estrogen Same. levels are low. And your vaginal tissue loves estrogen. And estrogen loves your vaginal tissue. Yeah. So, <laughs> so estrace um, and premarin are two mm. popular um, topical uh, estrogen treatments mm -hmm. that women can use and I feel like that that helps a lot and then even giving that extra estrogen to the vaginal tissue if you're having issues with incontinence I feel like the estrogen kind of plumps the vaginal tissue up a little bit mm -hmm. and it can sometimes help with incontinence issues cool. or pain with intercourse things yep. like that um, other things I'll recommend are mm -hmm. um, you can use different lubricants. Um, so coconut oil is mm -hmm. something um, yeah. you can use um, just to lubricate um, the vulva. Mm -hmm. um, you can use a silicone-based lubricant. Mm -hmm. That works really well um, if you don't want the hormone component mm -hmm. um, of the estrogen-based topicals. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. From the Arvigo Mind Abdominal Therapies practitioner, and the reason I call it therapies is because there is more than massage to it mm -hmm. if someone wants to engage further. Um, now, to make it very clear, I'm not an herbalist, and there are a lot of massage therapists, clinical herbalists that do the work, and I would refer you to an herbalist if you wanted to go the natural route on mm -hmm. that. Try maybe some of the things that Jen is suggesting first. Uh, one thing I can point you in the direction of is for some women, uh, what I call pelvic steams, which are something that we're trained in educating women on, can be helpful for vaginal dryness as well. And it's, uh, I won't get into it here, that's probably a separate Facebook itself. Um, I can certainly direct you to some fantastic vaginal steam sites. Uh, vag some call it pelvic steam, some call it vaginal steam. 
Um, Steamy Chick is one who's known okay. pretty nationally. Cool. Right? I can type that in the comments if anyone wants to know. Um, but that's a great way to tend to your space and to also potentially get some benefit to the tissues. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Where exactly is your practice? We're in Edgewater, Colorado, right by Sloan's Lake. Yeah. Um, so Edgewater is not really well known. Um, it's in Northwest Denver. It's a lovely, lovely place. If you ever get the chance to walk, we're on the main street. It's located at 5354 mm -hmm. West 25th Avenue um, in, Den in Northwest Denver. Jen and I both, we trade days practicing in a sweet little room in um, the practice of farm to table treatment, farm to treatment table, sorry, Becky. Um, it's a beautiful space created by Becky Kellogg, another fantastic physical therapist that we like to collaborate with. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And we can try to list some of these things too. I, yeah. I think I can do that on Facebook. <laughs> right. Yeah. And if you go to either of our sites, um, what's I'm, your website? I'm AndersonPTWellness.com. And then. Okay. And mine is Womb Matters. So Womb, like the uterus, W-O-M-B-M-A-T-T-E-R-S. Dot com, uh, and we both have the address listed there. Or you can go to Becky's website as well at farm to treatment table.com, yes. I believe, Becky, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, you can find us there. Yeah, so yeah, mm -hmm. good question. Yeah, <laughs> um, and then one other thing we wanted to mention on February 13th, um, from 5 30 to 7, we're gonna be offering a workshop here. Um, titled body after baby the real story um and that is just to help women that are either newly postpartum mm -hmm. or maybe you had your babies 10 20 years ago sure we can still help we can still help <laughs> um so check out either of our websites mm -hmm. um or either of our facebook pages yeah. to find information on that we'd love to have you um and we'll that will include a diastasis recti um, mm -hmm. screen. So diastasis recti is when you have splitting of the abdominal wall mm -hmm. um, after after being pregnant. Yep. And usually that should close on its own, but sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, and we can help you with that too. We can help <laughs> with that and we can assess you to see if you have it. So come to the workshop. It's a it's a really great night, and a, we're we have a third colleague, physical therapist, that we'll be teaching with Jessica Fallant, and she is fantastic, um, and she does a lot of Pilates work. So for those of you that are wondering, how do I never got back to doing the things I love physically? Right. Um, certainly, you can work with us individually, uh, one on one, but that would be a great low cost way to engage the conversation yeah. and to really get some valuable information for yourself. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So that's on February 13th, 530. Uh, you do need to pre-register. Yes. Um, and the registration I believe is on Becky's website. Yeah. The farm to treatment table.com. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. This info is so needed. We're, we're reading some of these comments, Peggy. Thank you. This is needed. Average is not normal. We'll just right. say it one more time. Right. So you don't need to live with these conditions. We can help you. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's the one thing I hear overwhelmingly mm -hmm. from my patients is like, why don't women know about this? Like, yeah. I had no idea that this existed. And it's just, we really just need to get the message out to women that there is help for this mm -hmm. um, because we deserve yeah. it. And I think it's important to note, you also treat men. I also treat men. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I also treat men. So, yeah, yeah I actually um, treated a gentleman today. Okay. Um, and I, I think, you know, I, I think it's scary for men, um, mm -hmm. but it will be a positive experience for you as well mm -hmm. because men are living with a lot of chronic pain issues as well, and Down that can under. be yep. helped. Um, Absolutely. You don't need to hide that. We no. get help. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So hopefully we're going to do this again. If you guys um, have any other questions, feel free to um, list them in the comments. We'll we'll try to answer them. Um, and, yeah. and 
yeah thanks for joining us we really appreciate it yep. and becky's telling us thank you becky um more info on everything including us and the events and registration at www.farm2 treatment table to treatmenttable.com so join us soon we'd love to see you all right okay. everyone have a good night, good night. thank you